Thank you for joining me again. We are still on our gauge modeling series, but I'll simply show you how to estimate the threshold gauge in the simplest form. Before I do so, I will always encourage you to watch uh, the prerequisite videos in sequential order. Please do not skip any of them. I've made five videos to date, so this is the sixth one. Kindly watch all so that you can actually have a better understanding of how to estimate a gauge model. So let's have a little background about the T-Gatch. Remember that news, events, incidents, they all have strong and powerful influence on decision-making of financial investors. Therefore, they have asymmetric impacts on financial markets. Some of these news may be mergers and acquisitions, royal wedding or royal divorce, terrorist attacks, the launch of a new discovery, secession or independence, they all have impacts on financial markets across the globe. A standard arch or gauge model treats both good and bad news symmetrically. That is, their impact on asset volatility is the same. So a standard arch and gauge model does not differentiate between good and bad news in the life of a series. By this we mean that what matters in this basic arch and gauge model is just the absolute value of the innovation and not the sign because the residual time in this case is squared. Therefore, in the basic arch and gauge models, a big positive shock or negative shock will have exactly the same magnitude on the volatility of the series. However, in natural fact, the impact of good and bad news on the financial assets may be asymmetric and not symmetric. What we are trying to say is that when good news hits a financial market, assets tend to enter a state of tranquility and volatility will decrease. But when a bad news hits a financial market, assets will enter a state of turbulence and volatility will increase. Because these are realities, financial econometricians have devised ways to capture their influence on financial assets using the threshold gauge. The T gauge model was introduced by the works of Zakonya 1990 and JGR in 1993. The main aim of the T gauge model is to capture asymmetries in terms of both negative and positive shocks. To do this is by including in the variance equation a multiplicative dummy variable and to check whether there's going to be a statistically significant difference when the shocks are negative. So here we have the conditional variance for a T gauge 1 1 model and as you can see in the conditional variance specification we have a multiplicative term here which is a dummy variable multiplied by the squared error term the lag one lag of the squared error term. So this represents the asymmetry in the model. It is to capture both good and bad news. That is the impact of news or information or events on a series or on the behavior of a series. And I also explain here that DT, which is a dummy now, takes the value of 1 if the news is bad. That is, the error term is negative. And 0 if the news is good and the error term is positive. So good news and bad news will have different impacts. A good news is a positive shock and the impact on the conditional variance is represented by beta 1. While bad news is a negative shock and the impact on the conditional variance is represented by beta 1 plus gamma 1. So beta 1 here represents the impact of good news. Beta 1 plus gamma 1 represents the impact of bad news. So we can say that gamma is known as the asymmetry or leverage term. So if gamma is positive, it shows that there is asymmetry in the model. But if gamma is zero, so that means the model will collapse to a standard GACH 1-1 model. If gamma is significant and positive, it implies that negative shocks will have larger effects 
on the conditional variance than positive shocks. So a typical t gauge 11 model can also be generalized to a t gauge PQ model, and this is how you construct the conditional variance specification. So if you don't know how to do it, there are so many examples in textbooks, you can also adapt what you are seeing on the screen. So this is a T gauge PQ model. So having explained all this, now let's go ahead to estimate any views. So I'm going to modify what I have here. This is for the gauge mean model that we just did. So I'll just simply come here, click on estimate. First thing first, I need to return this one back to none. The standard deviation here, open the dialog box, change it back to none. Now that we are estimating the threshold gauge, I'm going to modify zero here to one. So that is all I need to do. Let me check the options again. I'm using Eviews Legacy just to confirm it's still there. So every other thing looks fine. I click OK. So here on the screen, we have the output for the T gauge model. And if you look at the variance equation, you can see here this represents the asymmetry in the model. This. You can see here resid underscore 1 less than 0. So this term here is the asymmetry in the model. I've copied this to PowerPoint, so let's go over there for better explanation of the T-GATCH model. So this is the spec I estimated. Remember, I had to change my HM uh, dialog box here back to none. I specified one in the threshold order. Make sure you do that. My optimization method has always been Evius Legacy. You can see here. So this is my specification. All right. So let's go to interpretation of our results. So I won't be interpreting the main equation. It has given in my previous GATCH video. Endeavor you watch it. So I'm only going to explain the variance equation. Here we can see that the coefficient of the asymmetric term is statistically significant at the 1% level, also positive, 0 0.050691. It indicates that for this talk, there are asymmetries in the news. And it shows that bad news has a larger effect on the volatility of the stock than good news because the coefficient is positive. Now, how do we compute positive shock in this case? All you have to do is to specify the estimated conditional volatility, include the constant, which is this, 0, 0.0 in 7 places, 644, and 0.95, which is the gauge term and 0 0.014 which is the arch term the arch term in this case is beta 1 so this is the computation or the specification for the positive shock in the model now to specify the negative shock in estimating the time varying volatility the basic difference here is gamma which is the coefficient of asymmetry given by 0 0.051 approximately. So add that to beta, as I've done in this case. So this one gives you the specification for a negative shock as shown in this uh, model. The difference between the good and bad news on the FTSE in this case is 0 0.051, which is the coefficient of the asymmetric term gamma. So what do we conclude? The modeling of information or news or events are very significant determinants in asset volatility. I also wrote here that bad news have larger effects than good news for very obvious reasons. You can see here that beta 1 plus gamma is clearly greater than beta 1. So gamma, the coefficient of asymmetry, makes a huge impact in the behavior of this series. So modeling information or events in the life of a series gives an investor or a speculator a lot of information about the behavior of a series than when a simple or basic gauge model is estimated. By way of emphasis, video tutorials are not sufficient. Please, I have references and readings here which I've also used to prepare this video. Kindly engage one or two papers for a deeper and better understanding of gauge models. So I've finished the sixth video. Please endeavor to watch all. The next video will be on how to estimate the e gauge or what is known as the exponential gauge model. Once again, I appreciate you all for the comments I've received so far 
on my Gatch modeling series. I'm happy to hear that so many people now can make an effort to interpret their results and even estimate um, Gatch models, which they were not able to do before. I'm encouraged by your comments. I'm encouraged by your likes. I'm encouraged by you sharing my videos. Thank you so much. I am not taking you all for granted. I appreciate you. If you are yet to subscribe, please do so. Click on the subscribe button. It's free. It's at no cost. Join my Facebook community. I run a very interactive platform. Join me on Twitter. Engage with me on my website. And um, that will encourage me to make more interesting videos. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with the next video, which is on Exponential Gatch.